Hi everyone, my name is Karis. Welcome back to my corner of the internet where I talk about books and other things that I enjoy and welcome to my June wrap up. Now, if you saw my TBR for the month, you may know that I was very ambitious for this month. I thought I was gonna do so well and I'm just gonna say right from the start that I did not do anywhere near as well in terms of quantity of reading as I hoped. It's actually my worst reading month in terms of quantity for probably about a year. I have been super busy in June because I have moved back to my flat, I was on holiday for a week and that's where I thought I was gonna do like so much reading and I did probably read more that week than I do normally in a week but aside from that the reading has been very little i haven't really been making it a priority but i have been doing other things mainly just settling back into my flat working more hours this month than i have done for a very long time getting to know my new flatmate and also going into london and going to the theater and stuff so yeah i've been super busy but i did manage to finish three books in june although one of them i did start in may so i really only read like two books and a bit but that's fine. So the first thing that I finished in that week when I was on holiday, I actually did start in May, but as I said, I had a little bit left to read and that was the yearbook by Holly Bourne. I was super excited to read this because Holly Bourne was my ultimate fave way author. The Spinster Club trilogy remains like one of my favorite series of all time. Am I Normal Yet is one of my favorite books of all time. It had such an impact on me when I first read it. And I have read all of her other books since and I can't remember remember like a lot of specifics about them but I know that I have really enjoyed all of them and while I did enjoy this one it just doesn't quite live up to the hype of the others for me. I think it's because the character in this is a little bit younger than the other YA characters of Hollyborns that I've read so I think that might just be like a little bit of disconnect between me and this character. I'm not saying that it's like a bad book, it's definitely not, I just think I didn't connect with it as much because of that. So basically this book centers around a main character called Paige and she's in year 11 at school. So she's 16 and she is on like the school newspaper committee and she basically gets roped into taking part in this yearbook. And the girls that run the yearbook committee are like the very stereotypical mean girls. And they have this sort of plan to just not be very nice in the yearbook and basically like embarrass a lot of people. They're basically wanting to put in these memories which people might not want to remember. It's basically like bullying. Paige sees this going on and it's sort of like about her struggle like grappling with what to do with that. At the same time there's also quite a few things going on in her home life and then also alongside that she meets someone through the pages of a book. So Paige likes to leave scribbles in the margins and like notes and stuff of the books that she reads and then one day she finds a note from someone else and decides to try and reach out to them and connect and they do and their storyline is a big part of this as well. I'd say it's very much about sort of like finding yourself, finding your voice and standing up for what's right and I do always like the way that Holly Bourne does explore these sort of like social topics. A lot of her other books do deal very heavily with other topics like trauma and mental illness, all sorts of things like that. And while those specific things aren't featured as heavily in this, there were definitely a lot of important topics that were covered and I think that's something that Holly Bourne always does so well. And I did have a really fun and enjoyable time reading it. I did get through it quite quickly, although I do think that it could have been a bit shorter than it was. Um, and I did enjoy sort of being back in that school setting, although it wasn't like the most comfortable experience because obviously Paige wasn't having a great time. It did feel very realistic to me and it did bring up a lot of memories of my own school days. Some that I, you know, would prefer to forget, but that's fine. So yeah, all in all, I would recommend it. As I said, it's not my favourite of Holly Bourne's books, but I don't think that means that it's a bad book. I just think that her other ones are like so great. This didn't quite live up to that. But it has reminded me that I do just love Holly Bourne's writing style and the way that she creates characters and just makes things feel so real. So I'll definitely be picking up any and all of her future books. The next thing that I read in June was the thing that I read in its entirety, or the first thing that I did, and that was Get A Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. This was a gift from Rhiannon from Welsh Reader for my birthday and I've been so hyped to read this series and I can definitely see why people like it. This was my very first ever adult romance book, I'm pretty sure. It's definitely a genre that I 
have not read from very widely before at all and after reading this I definitely think that it's something that I want to explore more. I definitely think it's something that I'd have to be in like a certain mood to read and not something that I find myself leaning towards wanting to pick up all the time but I did read this at like the perfect time when I was on holiday on the beach. It wasn't that sunny when we were there but in my head it was sunny and I just had a fun time getting to know these two characters and seeing how their relationship played out. I will say that I wasn't like as invested in the relationship as I think a lot of people are. I liked the sort of trope that one character Chloe is a bit grumpy and the other character Red the love interest is sort of like the opposite of that and this like opposites attract vibe and the fact that they had a bit of a Thing where they didn't really like each other going on at the beginning. I thought that that worked really well and it helped to like really bring in elements of humour throughout the story. But I did also think that it sort of happened a bit quickly and I think, not that I've really read that many romances, but I think I would prefer like a slower burn romance than this one. But the other thing that I really loved about this, which a lot of people have talked about, is that Chloe Brown is a chronically ill character and obviously that representation is really fantastic to see. So all in all, I think I'd give it like a four star and the yearbook, I guess I, I didn't say, but I would give it like a three. But to be honest, I've more or less stopped giving star ratings recently because I've just been having a bit of a crisis about them and thinking that they're so arbitrary. But for the purpose of putting a rating on it, I would say a four star, I think. I did really enjoy it. And then after that, I decided to pick up the next book in the series and I'm gonna include it briefly here because I still haven't finished it. So I will talk about it more in July, but I am about 200, yeah, exactly 200 pages into Take a Hint, Danny Brown. And I am enjoying this one more than Chloe Brown so far. The romance is a lot more like slow burn and I really like Danny's character. But yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes, but I've just put it down and I haven't read it in like two weeks. So I really need to try and get on with this really soon. I'm hoping to finish it like early on in the month. And then the final thing that I finished in June was Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. I buddy read this with Emily from Emily Kathleen Reads. And it was meant to be a buddy read that lasted four days and it's lasted about like two weeks, three weeks maybe. We were both super busy and I'm so glad that Emily was busy as well because I would have otherwise been like the world's worst buddy reader because it did take me like quite a while to get through this. Not because it was a slow read, but just because I wasn't finding the time to sit down and pick it up. And I kind of wish that I had read it like over a shorter period of time. I think I would have like fallen into the story a lot more because I did find that each time I sat down and picked it back up again I it took me a little bit of time to remember who everyone was and the dynamics and like get back into the story so if you didn't know this book is translated from the Japanese and it's basically about this cafe in Japan where you can time travel but there are a lot of rules you can only sit in this one seat you can only do it once I think and you have to return to the present before the coffee gets cold otherwise you get stuck in the past and the way that you return is by like downing the cup of coffee. It's split into four parts and it more or less follows four separate stories of people who have traveled back into the past but it's not a short story it is a book like there are things that connect all of them and the narrative sort of flows between all of the characters and you just see the reasons for them going back and the implications that doing so has on the present and the future although one of the rules is also that the future can't change by going back into the past i just found it like a really interesting concept and i really enjoyed seeing all these different characters and their reasons for time traveling and the way that they dealt with seeing people again in a situation that they may not have done and in places I found it really sad as well. The thing that I wasn't so sure about with this is I did find it a little bit confusing in places. It took me a bit of time as I said to get into it and figure out like who exactly everyone was and who was working there and who was time traveling and also the like narrative. I wasn't sure in places if in the present, in the cafe timeline, if we were moving like in a linear way or if we were going back and forth. And actually sitting down and thinking about it now, I'm still not entirely sure. I think it's linear, but then it wouldn't surprise me if there were bits that did sort of flip back and forth a little bit because that would add to that whole sort of question of like, what is time and what does it all mean? But overall, did really enjoy this one. I think I'd give it like a three and a half sort of rating in terms of the other books that I read this month I would put it like slap bang in the middle of the two in terms of enjoyment so 
yeah i would definitely recommend it if you're interested it's really short you should be able to get through it quickly if you don't keep putting it off like i did and i think i would really like to try out the companion novel to this as well which i think is just more stories from the cafe so that should be really interesting so those were all of the things that i finished in june let me know in the comments if you've read any of these what you thought of them or what your favorite book of the month was or just leave me an emoji to let me know that you've watched the video other than that though that is it for today's video thank you all so much for watching i hope you're all keeping safe and staying well and i will see you again next time bye